Hello, in this short video I'm going to quickly demonstrate some of the code analysis features that are available in the embedded workbench. I have the embedded workbench for ARM open and if I right click on the project and go to options, if I have a license for CSTAT static analysis, I'll be able to take a look at the different CSTAT checks that are enabled. So the standard rules come from the common weakness enumeration from MITRE.org as well as CERT-C and CERT-C++ coding standards. And as you can see, they're broken down by individual rules and checkboxes. And there are many different ones that we can check. There are approximately 500 different rules, including some security rules, which are the most common ways that hackers try to break into systems, as well as MISRA-C and C++ rules. So in order to kick off a CSTAT analysis, Analysis. All I need to do is right click on the project and click analyze project. This will take about 20 or 30 seconds uh, to analyze the 50 or 60 files that are in this particular project. CSTAT can be run from the command line so it doesn't have to be done from the IDE. Additionally, you can run CSTAT just on a group of files such as this driver library or on an individual piece of source such as main.c. So you can only CSTAT the code that you've been working on that morning if you feel that that is more appropriate for you. So as you can see, our analysis is complete, and if we go back through, you can see some cases where we have some scaffold code, where we have a value that's returned that we never use. Uh, if we scroll down very quickly, you can see a case where a pointer is uh, null and then dereferenced. Now, it could be that there's only a single path or a couple of paths through the code where this pointer can be null. So if you expand this, it actually shows you the path through the code where this uh, pointer can be null. So if this happens, you have a possible assignment. If this is true, if this is true, and then this statement, so on and so forth. So you can see that it very quickly allows you to isolate where the issue is. Again, if we look at uh, any particular statement, even though the, the messages are fairly descriptive, if we don't understand what it's trying to tell us, we can press F1 and we get this context sensitive help that gives us a fuller description of the issue. The certainty severity matrix, which is how certain we are this really is an issue, corresponding with the severity of what happens if this issue manifests itself. You get all the coding standards that it violates, but most importantly, you get one to three code examples that show you a bad example and how to correct that bad example so that it will pass the check and make your code more robust. That's CSTAT in a nutshell, but on the flip side, we also have runtime analysis, and that is covered by our CRUN tool. So CRUN can do uh, help you with uh, checked heap, so it can help you find memory leaks, also bounds checking on any arrays or pointers that you're malloking off the heap, integer overflow, underflow conditions, divide by zero, which in most example applications, that divide by zero trap vector is turned off, and if you do a divide by zero, you get a zero. Also, unhandled switch cases where you don't provide a default case because you think you've handled everything that could possibly come through there. So what happens when you enable CRUN is it looks through your code to find places where it can instrument the code trying to find these types of vulnerabilities. So let's take a look at what this looks like when we're actually running it on a target. Now that the code has started up, we'll go ahead and let it run. And what we will find is that as the code is starting up, we very quickly hit an integer conversion failure because it changes the value from minus two to 65,534. But if we examine the source code, you can see that somebody put in an explicit cast. So typically when people do that, that means that they know the ramifications of what happens when this occurs. So we can say, all right, this is probably okay. I can right click and add a rule for this specific failure at this line of code or for the entire piece of source or I can do it for this failure for the entire project but I'm going to err on the side of caution and do it for that one line and because I think it's okay instead of logging it I'm just going to tell it to ignore so if we go ahead and let the code execute it looks like everything's going great uh, but I'm twisting a potentiometer on the board and you can see that I very quickly hit a divide by zero error 
Now, in examining the source code, it's pretty obvious that how I hit this. But what I want to show you is that sometimes things happen where you're taking inputs from an ADC or perhaps from user inputs, and that's what triggers the runtime error. And that's what this is intended to help you catch. If you look over in the disassembly window, you'll notice that it does a branch uh, to the runtime library to check to see if the divisor is zero. And if that divisor is zero, it halts the core before it performs the division. So when it always tries to find these issues before the bad action happens so that you can examine and figure out what's going on. So for instance, if you are calculating the index of an array and you get a C run message that says you've gone beyond the end of an array, what it does is it allows you to go back and look at at each one of the individual elements of the calculation of the index of the array to try to figure out why am I beyond the end of the array. So it helps you to find these types of defects very, very quickly while you're desk checking your code and before you check it into a formal build. Because once you check it into a formal build, then every defect counts against your release metrics. So by using these simple, easy to use tools, it helps you to find these defects much more quickly and helps you to meet your release metrics much more quickly.